have my money. I don't charge by the inch, I charge by the foot. Think I'm lying, bitch, here, take a look. 100% USDA grade A B. Here's my card, call me. You look like you ain't been broke in a while. Pick up the motherfucking phone and dial and have your money in a big ass stack. I'm swinging this dick like a new jack. Bitch. So, bitch. bitch better have my money. Heavy Tea's Grow Show, baby. Practicing Kung Fu. Oh, Tanya san, you must know how to use CO2 in your garden. How do we do it? You go to greenpadco2.com to check out the Green Pad and Green Pad Union. Oh, yeah. Green Pad, more CO2. Will bring you peace and tranquility to your life and to your garden. Cotton, green pod. Green pod and green pod junior. Junior. Green this pod. Is right. Go now. You buy now or forever you will be sad. Or forever suffer garden. Oh. Oh, Confucius say, those who don't use green pad are stupid asshole. Oh, stupid asshole. Confucius say, more CO2 is better in your garden. Dengasan. Oh, Confucius always say, 30, 50 percent for humidity. Oh, try green pad and green pad junior. At greenpadco2.com. She got all mad. Her little fucking booty. Like, if you're gonna wear shorts like that, people, you don't get all mad when 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 somebody says like, "Yo, what does your booty say?" When you, when you wear shit like that, you don't get mad when hey, you say, "What's hey, your booty say?" Hey. hey, Heavy Maze here, down at the local hydro shop. Talking with local growers on how to improve their garden. Uh, who me? Uh, what's up? Now, I've noticed you have a bottle in your hand. What is in that bottle? Uh, this bottle's a PGR. Um, I use it for uh, height control because I'm in a tent. You're using PGRs to control the height of your plants, but haven't you noticed that the quality of your plants goes down tremendously? Oh, God, that's the worst part about it, you know? And I go to the farmer's market a lot, and I try to give them my fresh fruits and stuff, and they beat me down on the prices ever since I've used it. Well, what if I told you right now there's a product today you can buy that brings back all of the lost essential oil production and what? quality, it recovers the natural look and flavor of your plants, and maintains flower size, but gets rid of excessive flower hardness. Oh, what, dude? Now, slow down. You're telling me there's something out there that's going to bring all that back in one product. I What is this product? Because I need it right now. That's right. It's called Uber Recover. Uber Recover is a product to be used on your plants after excessive PGR treatment or stress. Check it out at ubergrower.com or ask for it at your local hydro shop. Oh, I will. Get to punishing it with Uber Grower and Uber Recover. Shut the fuck up. Hey, brah. Have you seen the new kind nutrient from Botanicare? It's kind of a big thing. Uh, no. What's up with that? Well, I was totally pulling a Dawn Patrol, chilling with some honeys, when this troll is like, Yo, I heard your garden is total weak sauce. And I was like, as if, my garden is hella gnarly and bodacious. And then he was like, brah, if you want your stuff to be like Mondo Narnar, you need to hook up with Botanicare's kind nutrients. Okay, would you be so kind as to tell me what you're talking about? Only the most bitchin' nutrients to shred a grow since the invention of water, bro. Kind is on the serious, bro. There's one part base, one part grow, and one part boom. Kind is super rad because it's completely customizable so you can use it with any type of plant and medium, bro. And what's wicked, boss, is that the proprietary kind formulas eliminate the need to add separate calcium and magnesium supplements to compensate for water quality or specific grow medium. Uh, rad. That sounds like my kind of base nutrient. Totally. And Kind Grow has all these primo minerals and like super top secret blend of natural stuff so you can get a seriously lush canopy, right? And with the Kind Bloom, you get like this major hookup of phosphorus and potassium, but like in a totally righteous proportion so you get increased biomass and flower initiation. 
And what's even more awesome is you can adjust the levels of base, grow, and bloom to meet the needs of your medium, plants, and grow stage. You could say it's for any kind you grow. It's totally sweet. It was very kind of you to tell me about this. So I should, like, totally hop in my woody and cruise down to my local hydro hookup and score some kind nutrients from Botanicare? Like what? New from Botanicare. Kind base, grow, and bloom. The fully customizable line of nutrients developed for the modern grower. For more information, contact your local hydro store or go online to Botanicare.com. What kind will you grow? Heavy Tees Grow Show is the only show I'll listen to. Hey, Dr. Duff, are you yeah. signing up for another one of those internet dating sites after your divorce? No, I'm just ordering these freaking uh, douchebags from China here. Just going to be saving a lot of money on it. About a buck a bag. Did, did you say douchebags? Yeah, they're pots. They're fabric pots. They're, uh, you know, made in China. You know, they save a dollar a bag from all the other. Oh, it sounds like an imitation smart pot or something. Yeah. Yeah, I save a dollar, but, you know, I'm pretty sure these douchebags are going to work. Dude, I had a buddy of mine who used those same douche bags. He bought them direct from China. It killed his whole garden. Oh, uh, bro, what? So I'm better off spending that extra dollar on a smart pot? I'd get a smart pot. <sighs> Don't be a duff man. Make sure to buy the original patented smart pot. Check him out at smartpots.com. He's going, is he on season like eight Duck Dynasty? He's like working out the negotiations with that beard. Yep, you should hear his whistle. Really? That's his wife. <laughs> I'm going to have to find out. I'm going to ask him right now. From Manila to Mendo, Santiago to San Diego, the war rages on. Everywhere, gardeners struggle against the chains of tyranny. Growers fight for their inalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of higher yields. Voices around the world are raised in a chorus exclaiming, No more. No more weak potting soils. No more trying to grow plants in a soil that doesn't have enough nutrients to sustain life. The people are rising up, rising up and demanding Sanctuary Soils Victory brand superior garden mix. Victory Garden Mix, a blend of the best composted forest humus, peat moss, and perlite. Victory Garden Mix, teeming with worm castings, humic shale ore, fish, shrimp, crab, and kelp meal. Victory Garden Mix. Rich with dolomite and gypsum lime, glacial rock dust, oyster shell, and azomite. The people cry out in unison, proclaiming, We demand the freedom to grow the best plants possible in the best soil available. Sanctuary Soil is answering your call, freeing you from the shackles of inferior soils. Sanctuary Soil's victory brand superior garden mix. The best, highest quality planting mix available anywhere is now available to you by the bag or by the truckload. For more information, contact your local hydroponics store or go online to SanctuarySoil.com. Sanctuary Soil's Victory Brand Superior Garden Mix. Because together, we can grow it. We were the raw. We're listening to EFC Radio. Flexing now. Duff is flexing. I don't know. I'm bowing down to, to dudes yelling at me on Facebook. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. You know what the oh, worst part of all that is? Bro. Is that it's the Heavy Tea Grow Show, right? Yes, sir. Like Hordy always says, it's Heavy Tea's Grow Show, not mine. No, so you used to say that. I listen, listen though. Can I finish my thought? I don't listen. The, the people that run the like social media and shit, because dude, I have. Several su- successful businesses, family life, grow life, all that stuff. By no means can I post as much shit goes out on our social media. It's Heavy T562 under my control and my name on Facebook, which is a closed thing, but sometimes I talk shit, so you might see me pop up. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, to think listen up. that's my name on there, 
I I have to take responsibility for that. And if someone disrespects a listener, a sponsor, whatever it is, I take that personally. And don't think that I don't. But I can't control every fucking outlet all the time. If I could, I would be the magic man. You know, I just grow that fire, like I said. With the gas that Uber provides. <laughs> all right, two more calls. Forty Chris, you're on it. Let's go to Wisconsin. Nice. With yeah. Andrew. What's growing on, Andrew? Hey, how's it going? Good, Good man. Take, if you can, take us off speaker. Uh, you should be on speaker. He's got a Bluetooth. All right, just make sure that talk directly into the mic. Go ahead, dude. All right, you got it. Um, so you guys were talking about ceramic metal halides uh, a while back. I'm just wondering what the results were on that. Well, they're very promising, but they're lower wattage. So the, the, you see new fi- fixtures coming out with a couple metal halides in it. Uh, maybe about three. They're about 315 watts each in there. Uh, the the best thing about the ceramic metal halides is the spectrum coming off of it. It's pretty much as close that you can get to the sun as possible. But that's a color. That's the the spectrum coming off of it. Now we want to talk intensity. At 315 watts, that intensity just isn't going to give you that oomph that maybe a double-ended high-pressure sodium would give you. Right. My primary worry is about heat distribution. Mm -hmm. I've got a 20 by 6 room. Um, I've got low ceilings, seven-foot ceilings. I could put a thousand watt on a light mover. I'm not sure if that, you know, um, I don't want to install an AC. I just want to be, you know, running that and then potentially moving air out out of the room if need be. But I don't want to be using that um, because I want to be running CO2. So my thought is, um, if I'm running ceramic metal halides at 65 percent. Of the heat output, I could, you know, kind of do that more efficiently. Um, there are 900 watt options available. Okay. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, I can trade out that that thousand watt, um, you know, standard bulb for a, a 900 watt ceramic metal halide and kind of get the same output that I would expect. It, out it's of that. a specialty ballast needed yeah, for the yeah. ceramic uh, metal. I halide. think the guys that originally brought that out were the DNA lighting guys, and it was actually 900 and 45 watts because it's basically 315 times three. Um, but according to my research, there not that reliable and there's been a lot of issues with trying to get those 900 watt ceramic metal halides to actually last but i go back to what you said earlier you don't really want to use ac but you don't want to exhaust the air because you want to use co2 and i'm pretty much a firm believer in um air conditioned dehumidified heated whatever climate controlled rooms are superior and one of the main reasons they're superior is not only are you not at the uh, not at Mother Nature's uh, discretion. For example, cold street comes through your your temperatures when you're when you're exchanging air. You, Mother Nature dictates what temperature it's air you're bringing controlled. in. It's not as controlled with the air conditioner. Not only can I set my temperature where I want it and keep it there, regardless of a heat wave, cold snap, whatever, but I can also implement the CO2 and implement the CO2 efficiently to the point where I'm not sucking it out of my room and blowing it all out and having to change my tank or have my burner run all the time because I'm basically offsetting the effect of the CO2. So to me, um, the only reason I well, I would never have a grow that didn't have an air conditioner since I tried it for the first time more than 15 years ago, but um, I, I wouldn't even try to design a room that, that wasn't sealed with air conditioning. And I sell a filter for those people who bring in fresh outside air to keep out mold, mildew, and pest, and I still wouldn't grow with an intake. Okay, so but let's talk about this. Let's say um, Andrew is talking about he wants to run the full size of his room. But he just doesn't have the amount of air conditioning needed. Andrew, do you have some type of air conditioning? It's a basement build. I have little tiny windows. I can't really, you know, do a it's um, a little tough mini one. split. I can't do a mini split through concrete wall. No, you my... just put it. Okay, so yeah, is can. the entire is the entire basement grow, or did you section it off and wall off a section? No, it's half and half. Okay, so. 
as long as you could even put a window unit through the wall into the bloom area and tilt it properly and put a fucking Rubbermaid container underneath it to catch the water that drips off. And then exhaust that hot air out. And, but even that hot air in a basement, you're probably in a cold climate. Where's he from? Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah, he's in Wisconsin. That basement is not hot anyways in the winter because the obviously the, the heat is not of it around. It's fucking wintertime in Wisconsin. So the... The air conditioner, the heat that it puts off onto the outside of the grow isn't going to be so substantial that it overheats that area. And, and if it does, you'll get a little bit of sweating. And, the, the and if it does, but you can he, crack a window in your basement, or, right? Or and get some he's, really talking, cold he's air. talking about air cooling it. Wherever he was going to air cool his lights, he can now air cool the, the, the lung room, basically, the, the hot part right. that, that the air conditioning is putting in. But, but I'm telling you that the, the, what is the temperature in the basement in the wintertime with no lights in it, just in the basement? Cozy. Cold. I really don't know. It's not warm, though, right? Fuck no, it's in Wisconsin, player. Right? It's not warm. It's probably 60 <laughs> degrees, 50-something degrees. It's the frozen tundra. Am I right? Right. Right, so yeah. so the, the, if you put a mini split or even just a window unit through the wall, the heat that comes off the back of that unit or off the mini split will not be enough heat to actually warm the other side of the room up to where it's like not proper. It'll probably make it comfortable, more comfortable just from that hot air. Now, if you had a mini split in Southern California, in, in one, if you had one bedroom with a mini split in it and you had the unit in the bedroom next to it, it would get hot as fuck in there, but you're in a basement in Wisconsin in the wintertime, so the outside of the actual bloom area where that heat exchange is happening and that hot air is blowing off, it's probably just like having a heater in there to warm the room up a little bit, now, so now it'll probably work. Let's say, hypothetically, he did use a lower wattage and he went with that CM, CMH bulb. We're talking about equivalents of grams per watt. When you lower the output, the, that CMH, the, the best thing about those with the, the spectrum coming off is the quality. Your plants are going to produce a, a good amount of resin, a good amount of terpene, all those things that we like, but we're still going to be limited to watts per or grams per watts indoors. So if you lower it there down... There are people, though, that but, claim that the, but, but, the lower wattage actually yields more than, like, say, a 400 HPS. Yeah, and those guys are part of the Probiotic Failure Alliance. <laughs> All right. No, no. I'm, I'm not anti CMH. You need a lot more hoods, a lot more bulbs. Okay. You do have more light sources, but it's more expensive than an initial investment. And if you put three three fifteens to replace one one thousand, you still have nine hundred something watts of heat being produced. So it's not necessarily saving you on the heat. So if you're, what I'm saying is if you want to run CMH, HPS, whatever you want to run in that room, you still should air condition that room, seal that room. Yeah. It gives you better discretion. Exactly. You can, you can keep the scent from getting out. It gives you a more uh, rigid climate, and it allows you to inject CO2 very efficiently because you're not removing the CO2 from the room as you try to correct for the temperature it's increase. controlled environment agriculture, and Horty is exactly right. If you're trying to use a 945 CMH bulb, it's going to be close to what a 1,000-watt high-pressure sodium bulb is because no matter what, the empirical distribution of heat off watts equals a BTU, and you're going to get that no matter what it is. Right, watts energy, or watts. Energy going oh, yeah. into the garden is, are, is going to equal a heat of uh, measured in a BTU. And per 1,000-watt, non-air-cooled, you're looking at anywhere from 45 to up to 6,000 BTU depending – if it's a double-ended or something that has a little bit of extra oomph that runs at maybe 1250 um, watts or not. If you have a, a 945 CMH, you're going to need 4,000 to 5,000 BTU to cool each light. So if you have four lights, you're looking at a 24,000 BTU air conditioner to control that. Do, do, your, do, your, do your basement windows actually open or no? Slide left and right. They slide. Okay, so... If you still wanted to run air-cooled hoods, I do know people in Michigan and other places that literally run a basement full of air-cooled reflectors. They have the window open. They have the window open, right? They pull the air from the side of the basement that's not the bloom room, right? So you have a, a wall built in your basement with a door to the bloom room. They pull the air from 
the cold side where the 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 part they're not growing in <laughs> with the open window. They pull that cold air through all those hoods, and then they blow it right up into the house and add to the heat in the house. It helps heat their house. So people use the heat from the air-cooled reflector to actually warm their home. So, but, but again, if you're in a basement and you have two sides, the side you're blooming in can have air conditioning and climate control to where you don't even necessarily need air-cooled reflectors because the air conditioner will handle it, and you're not going to overheat the other side in Wisconsin in the wintertime. And if it does get warm, you can crack the window, and you know damn well it's going to be the same temperature as outdoors. You, you know what it is, yeah. Horty, is Andrew brings up a great point, that people design a grow room based on what size they may have available, but yeah. two things they don't think about is cooling the amount of, of lights they want to put in there properly, and then the amperage that the actual house or the or the, the garden can run. And I've had people come in and buy six lights, and they didn't realize that they have one fucking 30-amp breaker to that room. Right, so they and, can't even run them. Right. So so making sure that you cross your T's, dot your I's. If you're going to set it up for controlled environment ag without air cooling, you need 4,500 to about 6,000 BTU of air conditioning per 1,000-watt light. And if you're running air-cooled reflectors that pull the air from outside of the room through the hoods and then back out of the room because if you're running an air conditioner in a room, you don't have air-cooled hoods in it that suck the air from the room through the hoods because you're just blowing out all the AC. So if you choose to run air-cooled reflectors, pull the air for the reflectors from outside of the room through the reflectors and then back out of the room. And if you do that, your air conditioner probably needs to be about half to 60% but, but, of the, that, so yeah. three to 4,000, 4,500 BTU. If you pull it from outside where it's so cold, your ducting, your lens, everything's going to sweat a lot because of the heat and the cold air hitting. Right, and, but you're still pulling it from not actually no, no outside, problem. but from the other side exactly. in the basement. So yeah. what you probably will end up with is the air-cooled hoods will warm the outside of the bloom in the basement. So your basement will be a little warmer than it normally would be in the winter. But I think that because you're in Wisconsin in the winter, I still would put an air conditioner in the space that you're going to grow in and yeah. just have the heat on the backside. It's it's not going to be agree. too hot. Controlled all the way for discretion and for your plants. Right. No blowing stinky air out. House stinking. Andrew, I'm going to send you some stuff. I'm going to send you some attack to t from Optic Foliar to take care of your mildew or mold needs. I'm going to send you some of the transport to mix with that attack to make it available to the plant immediately. I'm going to send you some of the original green pads. I'm going to send you some of that turpinator to help make your garden AAA. And for your roots, I'm going to send you some of that rhizoblast. All that stuff over $200 worth of grow gear, Andrew. Where do you shop? You see Hydro. Awesome, dude. I really appreciate you calling in, man. And hopefully you get it set up right. Just make sure that you think about all those things. Don't rush to set it up and just go to some fucking shitty forum that some dude that has grown the depth says this is the way to do it. Look at it logically with your common sense and say, yeah, it makes sense exactly how we're talking about. And once you think about it that way, it, it, it will click in your head. Sounds good, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Andrew. Yay. Sayonara. All right. Allie in Massachusetts. Allie. Yes. Is this Allie? Yes. Allie? Allie, yes. Hey, Allie. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Are you ready for it? Yes. All right. Yeah. I give you the duff. <laughs> Allie. Allie. Yes. How are you, girl? Good. How are you? Oh, better now that I'm talking to you. How's your uh, bush doing tonight? It's cold. Is it cold? <laughs> Yes. Well, you might want me to come down there and uh, blow on that. My hot wind will warm everything up. You know, I'm uh, from Southern California where it's nice and hot. Uh, yes. Should I bring some of that heat over there? Some of that habanero, some of that chili peppers that we're known to grow? Or would you like a hard almond? What the fuck? Hard almond? <laughs> <laughs> you know how almonds are. It's a one inch a lot of. <laughs> They're full. <laughs> Calcium girl. Covered one. Yes. The Chobani style. She went away. <laughs> she she ran hung away. up. Her she, man knocked her out. Yeah, she's done. <laughs> I'm done. Allie. That was awesome. Hello. 
Hey, she's Ali. There. How you doing, girl? Good. How are you? All right. Let's take this down. Rewind a little bit. You ready? All right. What's growing up? I was just wondering um, how low a temperature they can withstand without it affecting them, and what's the best way to protect from frost. Okay, the lowest temperature, you basically don't want it to go indoors below 65 degrees. Ideal on when the, the light's on is 75 degrees to 80, and you don't want more than a 10-degree swing. So if we go down to 65, we're good. You might in later stages, especially if you failed in giving the plant enough calcium and magnesium, see uh, – uh, emphasis of chlorosis that actually the 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 chlorophyll dies and leaves a, a purple pigment but below a 10 degree swing if you're going 15 20 degree swing from night to daytime temperature that is the prime circumstance that powdery mildew pops up it's not always having high humidity it's not always having high temperatures um, it's the swing that makes the the plants more susceptible so we want to keep it as rigid as possible lights on and lights off now, it might be hard to control that. You're, you're saying, now we've got to plug in heaters, uh, blah, blah, blah. It's certain things that you can do to help offset uh, extreme cold, extreme heat, drought, is use a silica product on your plants, something like the um, silica blast, um, the europonic silica, which is an 11% silica, um, and that will bolster the plant cells so they can naturally fight off those pathogens if we go outside those 10-degree 10, 10 swings. Dang, she, she's speechless. What? Yes, but what if I'm growing outside? Well, you're in Massachusetts. You didn't get it from outside back inside because it's going to snow. That's yeah, I mean, are your plants... Are your that's plants, true. Your, your plants are outdoors. <laughs> are, are they almost done flowering? Oh, gosh, boy. Yeah, they're almost done, but a lot of times we'll get one cold night, and then it'll warm up again for, I don't know, a couple of weeks. How many, so plants, that, yeah, do you have, how many plants do you have outdoors? Uh, Enough. Six or seven. Enough. Are they really, yeah. really, really uh, care? Are, are they really big? Are they in the ground? Are they in yeah, pots? Yeah, there's two in the ground and, and, and some in, in pots. So she's trying to get to the end without dealing with frost right now. Yes. That's what I'm trying to get to, but I'm trying to ask her. So you have a few in pots. Yes. Right? And you have some right. that are in the ground. Yeah. The ones yeah. that are in the ground, are they, like, enormous or are they, like, how big are they? Um, Good size. like uh, Good feet. size. Specifically, yeah. sorry, I'm talking to a few. They're big. They're they're in the ground. Feet. What do you want to eat? I don't know. Yes, that's <laughs> so they're, they're in the ground. They're, they're, they're almost finished. So they're four feet. Was, they're four feet. So she's is almost, that what you're saying? But she's yeah. almost finished. I'm trying. Yeah, they're to, almost. Heavy they're feet. almost Can I help finished. The lady I just want to get them. We're gonna have one okay. cold wow. night. What and you, I I want to know the best way to to take hold care on, of Hold on, hold on, Hordy, stop. Doctor Duff has a way to warm up your plants on a cold night. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> let me tell you about this. How are you going to warm up a plant, Duff? You're going to want to warm this up out night. Duralog and what else? It's a uh, fleece blanket with my picture on it. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, nothing warms up more than a plant in my blanket with my picture. It's so hot, it's known to cause fires. Forest fires, girl. So make sure you bring a fire extinguisher when you get my blanket. You never know. They say it starts fires anywhere, so don't put it between your legs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shut them up. Hey, outside, Hordy, what, what, the, the what size, I'm trying to tell her is that cover the fucking plants. You you can you can make like a PVC one one inch PVC frame with some plastic over it. Get a clear plastic that you, bag and that put, you can put, put it over. over the actual area that the two plants are in yeah. since they're only four feet high. If it's really, really, really going to get cold, I mean, you could go as far as to add like a uh, one of those electric space heaters and on an extension right. cord and put it inside the little tent that you make over the plant. You feel okay. me? The ones yes. that are in pots. Um, yeah, it, it, I'll move those indoors. Move them indoors. Basically, that's what you do. You move them indoors. My only concern is, is infecting my indoor plants with mites. Well, okay, then do you have mites on your outdoor plants? Uh, no, but sometimes you don't really know that they're there until they're really stressed, you know what I mean? Or they're just a True, so, so I, let me ask. Barely you know how mites are. We barely know Duff is do, here. Do you have a garage? Uh, yes, I do. Put them in the garage. Okay. That's where our other garden is. <laughs> no, or, or, yeah, if your other garden's in the garage, don't it's put them in the garage. Up. But what I'm saying is if you have an uh, extra bedroom that you're growing in indoors 
and you have plants outside and you need to move them inside, don't put them in that room. Right. Just put right, them somewhere right. else. Now, the further you can keep them away from the inside of yes. your actual home, put yes. them in the garage. Put them in the shed. Uh, if the garage gets cold, too, put a space heater in the garage. Start a fire. Keep an eye on the temperature. When you know that it's going to get when it's going to get wicked cold, then you move the shit into the garage. You, you, you can use shade cloth. You can use wicked plastic to, to protect the plants against the frost and the cold. Plants transpire when, when it's nighttime. So if you put them in plastic, you might have a lot of water transpiring, and then it could freeze. Right. So you need to make ventilation holes for it. That's why I prefer okay. shade cloth to do that. But just like how okay, humans... Okay, like Rene. Uh, shade cloth. Uh, Rene, I yeah. understand. But, exactly. but for you, if you build a little plastic tent over it with a PVC frame, you might want to actually put, like I said, a space heater in there, like those radiator-looking ones that you plug in that are full right. of oil or something. Right. And then you don't want to vent it because then you're venting out all the heat. But right. the temperature should be high enough that you don't hit the frost point inside of that little space. Right. So you right. don't have to worry about the water that is collecting overnight actually right. freezing on the plant tissue. Uh, now, don't leave right. the cover on it the next day. Remove right. it. Right, yeah, no, but take it right off as soon as Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. If there's a week left, just use a cover. Don't you don't have a blanket or a space heater? Just use a cover to protect it. Or you can get the deep right. rough tape. And it's that easy. Down. Deep breaths, everyone, and away we go. <sighs> Allie from Massachusetts, you waited That's on the line back. forever, and That's for that, back. I'm going to hook you up with a heavy tea grow show T-shirt. <laughs> Congratulations. You have a multi-limited edition that has gone out to every listener. Oh, no. Ali, I'm hooking you up, girl. I'm going to send you some of the Silica Blast to bolster your plant cells against that frost, against heat, against drought, whatever it is. Use it in your outdoor. Use it in your indoor. I'm going to send her some of the Pyro K to try out pyro on both of her outdoor and indoor next Aloha. season or this season, Ali. That, that's a $110 um, value right there. It's a, li- it's a little bit more, I think. It's a buck twenty. A buck twenty just for that bottle. I'm gonna send her some crazy swell. Cause Ali, you sound like you like to get cray cray. Um, and some smart pots. Cray cray. Some smart pots and a pallet of mission fertilizer. Yeah. And some jiffy over there. All right, Ali. Fifty-five gallon. Ali, the, 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 the main thing is cover them. I will. In both of those things, it's cover them. Keep the plant's natural heat and the radiant heat from the ground from escaping, and the plant can use that, okay? We have a few hours during the, the coldest parts of the night to make sure they don't get frostbit. And since you only have a week left, you know, I, I think that you should be just fine. If you start seeing frostbit and leaves, start removing those now so that it's not a drain on the plant. All right. Thank you. All right, Allie. Hey, I love you, girl. All right. Stay Boston. Aloha Alley. All right, guys. Grand prize question. You guys suck at this. I got it. Okay, go ahead. Where did me and Heavy T go Monday? Booyah. 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 Where did we go in San Diego on Monday? What what did we do? Why did we go to San Diego Sunday or Monday night? Why did we go there? What were we doing? 562-653-0707. We have a combo meter from Blue Lab. We have the full line of Uber Nutrients. We have some Turpinator. We have some gr- a granddaddy pad from our friends at Green Pad. And uh, maybe a little bit something else. 562 653 Package. $700 worth of shit. Right here on Heavy Tea's Go Show, baby. We'll be right back after these messages.
tfcradio.com. Coming to grips with measuring pH is a fundamental part of ensuring a successful crop. Of course, having the right nutrient mix is important, but without a slightly acidic pH level, plants won't receive optimal benefits from the nutrients supplied. Blue Lab has a range of pH measurement tools available to help both the commercial and small-scale growers. These include the Blue Lab Guardian Monitor, the Blue Lab Combo Meter, the Blue Lab pH Meter, the Blue Lab pH Pen, and the Blue Lab Soil pH Meter. For more information, visit us online at getbluelab.com. Yeah, that's how I do it, Saint. Live and learn, player. Live and learn. Uber, because you want more. Hey guys, come outside, check out my new car for our new sponsor, Uber. Yeah. You bought a new car to drive for Uber, Duff? Yeah, I'll be picking up people making cash. This ad is for Uber Nutrients. Wait, what, nutrients? Yeah, the powerful, quality-oriented nutrients designed for the professional grower. What am I supposed to do with this brand new car? Maybe drive yourself up to the local hydro shop and ask for Uber Nutrients. Uber Nutrients, where do I find that on the internet? If you can't make it up to your local hydro shop, Duff, go to ubergrower.com. Ubergrower.com? That's ubergrower.com. Yeah, I'm going to have to try Uber. High-performance nutrients for your plants. Uber, because you want more. The hot chick over there, Jess. Oh, man, Jack. Fuck, Jack, Jack. Jack, seriously, Jack. Go check out Jess over at that booth over there. She. Oh, dang, girl. Oh, she can't just be looking and, like, turn away like that. Hey, girl, where'd you get them shoes? Oh, come on. Where'd you get them shoes, girl? Oh, she just gave me the cold shoulder. She didn't give me shit. They look good, girl. They look good. Hi, and welcome to Nonspecific Hydro. Yeah, hey, I have a buddy of mine that was telling me about a great additive. Okay, do you remember the name? Uh, yeah, his name's Steve. He's a good buddy. No, no, the product. No, he told me it was a super concentrated organic enhancer. Comes in a yellow bottle. Well, it sounds like he's talking about Florilicious Plus from General Hydroponics. I don't think that was the name, but he also told me it was a vegan bioplant stimulator that contained vitamins, plant sugars, amino acids, seaweed extract. Yeah, that would be General Hydroponics Florilicious Plus. I don't think that's it, man. He told me it was something like Dora Vicious Flush or something, and he said it was like an organic supplement that could also be used in vegging or flowering and that was compatible with hydro, soil, and cocoa. Yes, that would be General Hydroponics Florilicious Plus. Oh, hey, man. I just remembered what it's called. It's Florilicious Plus. Oh, good. I was drawing a blank. Florilicious Plus from General Hydroponics. Ask for it by name. Monsanto repoed my hydro store. Hey, everyone. Heavy T here with a great opportunity for shop owners and indoor gardening companies out there. Did you know everyday growers the world over grow more than 10 million plants with Jiffy products? Over the last 60 years, Jiffy has built a reputation of making growing media for the professional horticulture and farming communities. In addition, they now offer a full product range for the keen leisure gardener based on professional propagation techniques, but packaged for growers of all sizes. Whether you're a hobbyist or running a commercial farm, Jiffy now has you covered. Now Jiffy is making their highly demanded performance starting plugs available for private labeling to retail hydroponic and indoor gardening companies worldwide. Do you want to expand your existing brand name with an incomparable rooting substrate? Or are you a retail store looking to maximize your return on investment without sacrificing quality? Then Jiffy is your company. In fact, most indoor and hobbyist growers recognize the brand names of Acela Root, Super Sprouter, and Root Shooters. But what most of them don't realize is that those are private label performance trades made by Jiffy. Those companies know that having a partnership with Jiffy gives them the experience and know-how spanning decades and only the best professional quality for their customers, and you can know that too. Don't let this opportunity pass you or your store by. Contact Michael Brenner in Jiffy's professional grower division at 1-800-323-1047 and learn what millions of growers worldwide already know by visiting www.jiffygroup.com now. Hello, I'm Michael Brenner. I've been with Jiffy for 15 years, and as the head of the Home Hydroponic Division for Jiffy, I've worked with growers all over the country. There's not a plant on this earth I can't propagate. Give me a call at 1-800-323-1047, and I can help you out. Thank you.
I'll show you that artichoke, bro. You're going to be amazed. And now, a grow tip with Heavy Tea. There are several different ways to take clones from a plant. There are some rules to follow, though, to make sure you're successful with whatever method you're using. Always start with clean, filtered water and healthy stock plants. Use a water-soluble nutrient solution with adequate phosphorus to stimulate root development. Add a cloning gel with some rooting hormone for faster rooting times. Cuttings require heat and humidity for survival, but too much is detrimental. Always start with clean machines and new substrate to give your new clones a healthy start. This is Heavy T reminding you to clone responsibly. For more grow tips, go to dfcradio.com. And tune into the Heavy T Grow Show. Hey, what's show. up? We're live at the Max Yield Indoor Garden Expo 2015, Los Angeles. What's up, man? I'm with Everdry. How's it going? Doing well, man. Thank you for having me. What was your name? I'm Matt Henson. Nice. How long have you been working with Everdry? I've been with the company 10 years. Nice. So you know a lot about the product. Let, it, let us know what Everdry is and why we should use it. Absolutely. So uh, what Everdry has done is we've come out with a, uh, a renewable solution uh, to removing moisture from your grow tents and, uh, and helping aid in the, uh, the speeding up of the drying process. Um, so basically our products are uh, silica gel based technology and uh, they uh, silently and, and passively absorb the moisture from the area that's placed. As it absorbs the moisture, we have a, a little indicator window on the front that changes colors from blue to pink. Uh, once it turns pink, it's done, it's ready to go. You fold it over, pop out the plug, plug it in, it heats up, and uh, renews the unit. So you can repeat that process over and over again for 10 years. So what size of a grow room can you put these in? Um, we have a couple different size dehumidifiers. Um, the smallest one we have will do 333 cubic feet. Um, you know, so the uh, largest one we have will do 500 cubic feet. Uh, so you, know, you can go in a 5x5, five five, no problem at all. Uh, the products are, are definitely designed um, you know, for, uh, you know, for grow tents, for sure. Nice. How often would you change one out? Uh, it depends on the situation, how often you're in and out of the tent, how much moisture is getting in there. Um, you know, uh, anywhere from two to six weeks, you know, just depends. Yeah. Okay. If someone want to check it out, what's you guys' website? Uh, you can go to evadry.com. Just like that? Yeah, it's eva-dry.com. Just like that. Heavy Tees Grow Show, dfzradio.com. Appreciate it. Hey, I learned from you guys so much. I keep uh, downloading your uh, uh, shows onto my iPod and listen to them during the day at work. The journal and all that good stuff. You guys are awesome. Keep it up. You're listening to Heavy Tea's Grow Show live on dfcradio.com. Heavy Tea loads us up every Wednesday night. Hey, what's up? We're live. Max Yield 2015, Heavy Tees Grow Show, DFZRadio.com. I'm standing right here with Kyle Cushman. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm great. How you doing? I'm doing really good, man. Loving the expo today. A lot of great people out here. Want to let everybody know about your product? Uh, Vegan Matrix. I designed Vegan Matrix to uh, give everybody the chance to be an expert cultivator right out the gate. Um, and what I did was I designed it, I formulated it so that you can feed with every watering so there's no guesswork. So basically, I rinse once during veg, once during flowering. You just follow the feed chart, by the way, which uh, I have a feed chart specifically for indica, sativa, and hybrid varieties. So again, taking the guesswork out, all you got to do is follow the feed chart, and you simply grow the cleanest, purest medicine possible. Okay, what's the difference from veganic and organic, and is there a difference? Yeah, there is a difference. Uh, vegan organic means everything we use has to be organic, but you don't use any animal products. And uh, that's important because as the earth gets dirtier, unfortunately, the stuff coming out of the animals isn't as clean as it used to be. It's loaded with antibiotics, hormones, pesticides. So uh, Vega Matrix is 100% safe and non-toxic for all living things. Yeah. If someone wants to check this out, where can we find this Vega Matrix? Well, go to veganmatrix.net or kylecushman.com. Um, I also have a radio show appearing uh, weekly every Wednesday on cannabisradio.com. And I uh, hope to see you guys out there on Facebook, Instagram. Send me some pictures. Oh, we most definitely will, man. We really appreciate the interview. Thank you. Enjoy the show. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it.
Busta Rhymes in the studio. Out of the green room, Busta Rhymes is here. What's up, Busta? Busta Douglas. <laughs> What's the grand prize question? What event did Heavy T and I attend Monday night in San Diego? Three people have the answer. Nice. Pick one of them. Number two. Stead, you pick. Ooh. Number two. Okay, we're going to number two, Stead. Dos. Wait, that's not two. That's two. Hey, get number one back because I accidentally hit that guy. So if this guy doesn't have the answer. Billy in Oregon. Yeah, how's it going? What's up, brother? Wait, did you, what you saw or where you saw it? Whatever. Well, know. we were in San Diego. We already said that. So wh- yeah. where, where did we go? Qual- Qualcomm Stadium. Qualcomm Stadium for what event? Monday Night Football. It's the Murph, bro. It's not Qualcomm. Jack Fuck Murphy, that. baby. It's the Murph. Oh. For fuck's sake, I hate this new corporate shit. Sorry. That is the winner, winner, chicken dinner, Billy from Morgan. Where do you shop? Portland Hydroponic. Portland Hydro. Oh, Portland Hydro. We're going to send a combo uh-huh. meter out there. We're going to send the full line of Uber, the Uni One, the Pyro K, yes. the FDS, the RNA. We're going to send a granddaddy pass. So you know Devin. We're gonna send some Turpinator. We're gonna send some Crazy Swell. We're gonna send some Jiffy Plugs. Send it all. Send it all. And Dang, as much send swag. The whole store over here. What size shirt do you wear? A uh, large. A large shirt as well. All that stuff over seven hundred fifty dollars worth of free grow gear, Billy, just for listening to the goddamn Heavy Tea Grow Show. Dang, you guys are the best, man. You set me up. That's what's up. Go ahead, Horty. Every Wednesday night from 6 to 10 Pacific Standard Time, who's hooking you up with the freshest grow knowledge and the dopest grow gear? The Grow Tea Show. Man. That that works. (laughs) (laughs) You want me to say the (laughs) Z? That's fucking awesome. Oh, Billy. Billy, Billy. It's late in Oregon. (laughs) As it is. Yeah, and we're... We're legal over here, too, so help me out a little. Hey, we know you're super safe. We appreciate you listening, Billy. If you need to know about your prizes, contact shipping at dfcradio.com. That's right. I'm going to send you to the screener right now so they can get all your info. Killing it. Anthony and Rick, you had the right answers as well. We're going to send you a free T-shirt. Make sure that happens. Right, Bill? Stay on the line. Hot Bill. Uh, thank you to Uber Stead, Uber Nutrients, Aloha. doing it Thanks up. For us, guys. Really, really helping people grow that fire across the Fuck country. Yeah. Agreed. It is the best uh, kept secret in grow right now. Isn't it amazing? It's such a secret. It's fucking crazy. Dude, dude, bra, it, it's bra, happening, bro. Super brada, 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 brada. Check it out. Now it's time for the recap. Brought to you by the artist formerly known <laughs> as Get Loaded Television. What's up? You know what it is. It's S to the T right here, chilling with Cali Breeze. We're in the building. This is the recap where we break down the show. The show was so crazy, so many complicated questions. I don't even feel like I'm qualified to even answer these questions. What you say? I think they need to check out the podcast at dfzradio.com and check out the last episode tonight. That way you can catch up. And then tomorrow, you can check out tonight's episode. You can rewind it, pause it, bring it back. Whatever you need to do, all the info is going to be right there stored for you. So if you miss anything or you called in, you maybe you didn't hear everything you want, just come back. DFZRadio.com. And you're going to get all the info you need. 
we had dwc questions uh ph questions you know we had uh, some special guests in the building Uber stand in the building. That's right. Oh, ah, that. My player partner, you know what I'm saying? My brother from another mother, you feel me? Bringing plenty of aloha and All blessed, good aloha blessed in the us building. with the aloha oh, spirit. Mm. It's the real deal. Yes, sir. That's right. And then we had Garden Culture, they called in. You know, shout out to Eric. Yeah. It was a great interview. Yeah, he he definitely came and um, he broke came down with that uh with that energy though and he broke it down and let us know what it really is though. He broke down some uh, light questions and stuff, ballast issues, you know. Yeah, that's a dope magazine though, you feel I me? Mean? Make sure you check him out at gardenculturemagazine.com. Mm-hmm. Definitely we had uh plenty hydro questions. You we gave know. out so many prize we gave out so many prizes tonight, though. Yeah, like, I, like, how how much money you think we give out tonight with the worth of prizes? You know, a whole lot of. That's right. We ain't gonna put no number. We say a whole lot of. And once again, if you have any questions about shipping prizes or anything, you haven't got your prize yet, or you only got certain pieces of your prize, make sure you contact me at shipping at dfzradio.com. Be patient, you feel me? Be patient and uh, wait till you talk to me that way because no one, I, I'm the one that handles this. No one else really handles it. I'm the one that's making sure it gets out and everything. So until you contact me, we'll, we'll make sure that it gets out there. We always deliver. So like I said, tune in next week, every Wednesday. 6 p.m. right here on dfzradio.com. Hey, I'm going to just say this, man. We definitely appreciate all the sponsors. You feel me? Without them, where would the show be? You feel me? Hey, T definitely came through with all that good grow knowledge, Hordy. You feel me? Duff, man. Definitely. Hey, Stead, man. You always come through like a real boss dude. Shout out to my boy, Steve. Tell him I said what it is, you feel me? That's right. Hey, man, what else can we say? You already heard what Saint said. Go check out all the past shows and get your grow knowledge up. That's right. Shout out to all the Libras. I'm going to just end the show like this. Happy birthday to Uncle Snoop. You feel me? It's Libra season, god damn it. Happy birthday, Uncle Snoop. You feel me? From another Libra, though. Keep doing what you're doing, man. And make hey, more yeah. to come, though. That's uh. right, man. Shout out to the Unk Snoop. Yeah, you feel me? He been and, make, it. and make sure that. Many moons, you dig? And then on October Keep 24th, doing it, October 24th, yeah. uh, you could come hang out with us, man. You could come hang out with the whole crew, mm -hmm. the whole DFZ radio staff. I'm talking about not just this show, a lot of shows. We're going to all be right there representing. You know, we're going to be at the Masquerade. Oh, yeah. That's the fourth annual. Brought to you by BeerBuzz.com. And that's going to be on October 24th from 5 to 9 p.m. That's at the be. Industry Hills Expo Center. It's the fourth annual Beer Buzz Masquerade. Yeah, that's going to be off the chain right You can get your tickets right now. You got to get them because they're going fast. I need my ticket. There's only a couple left. Once you buy your ticket... You're going to get full, non, there's no limit to as much as you could drink. It's really up to you. There's going to be Faded it. over 50 brewers, top-notch brew, top-of-the-notch craft Faded beer. Faded it. If you're into craft beer, this is where you want to be. Make sure you check you it out. Fourth Annual Beer so Buzz. It ain't even going to be, you know, it's going to be cold. It's going to be awesome, so check Might it out. Might as well get your Uber situation together, you feel me? Like I said, $20. That's right. So for 20 bucks, you want to come out and drink. Get dropped off, and uh, you can catch the Uber home for 20 bucks. That's a special no matter what. Check it out, beerbuzz.com, 4th Annual Masquerade. Dress up or not, there's going to be plenty of honeys, plenty of craft beer, and uh, you can hang out with the crew, so check it All out. Right, check out the show this week, man. This Sunday, you feel me? It's going down, digitaldoberadio.com. Get Loaded TV. We're going to be going live at 3 p.m. You feel me? Pacific Standard Time. Other than that, we out.